All right, question number 25. We're taking derivatives here. So we're going to start with the power rule. And then inside out. So the power rule, ln, that's a fraction. What I see goes in the denominator. And then the derivative of that goes in the, in the numerator. And the derivative of secant is secant tangent. Obviously no plus c because we're taking derivatives. 26. And if you notice, these do cross out and it'd be just tangent. x equals cosine arc sine t. Some different letters. So for x, we're just going to write as x prime, which is fine. You could also write it as uh, dt by dx. That's perfect. Uh, what's the rule for cosine? Well, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Copy. Then what's inside the parentheses creates a hook. So what's the derivative of arc sine? It's a fraction. It's a square root. It's 1 minus, and you square it. And then the derivative of that, that's the hook on top. That. In this case, it might be interesting to note that sine and arc sine are inverses. They undo each other. So that you're left with negative t over the square root of 1 minus t squared. Maybe that's interesting, maybe it's not. But for multiple choice, to have that ability to see it would be big, right? 27. y equals arctan v subtract 1 squared. All right, step number one. This is a fraction. It's 1 plus. We're going to square that. So that's v minus 1 to the fourth. And then the derivative of that is the hook. There's no hook after that. 28. This is going to be the product rule. Remember to press pause and try your best. So press pause. Product rule, try it. The first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And then it asks for the second derivative. This is the product rule again. The first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first, which is 1. The derivative of sine is cosine. If you want, you can clean it up just a little bit. And then plug in. So it says to plug in negative, uh, plug in pi over 4. So it'd be helpful to understand that pi over 4, it's root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. That's the point on the unit circle. For sine, it's the y coordinate. For cosine, it's the x-coordinate. They happen to be the same value, so you're just plugging in the same number. So negative root 2 over 2. Ugh, sorry. x is pi over 4. So it's negative pi over 4. Then the value of sine at pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Cosine at pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Uh, you could write this as negative pi root 2 over 8 and plus root something. Who knows? Two's cross out. All that's good. All right, number 29. Without using a calculator, find the x values where y equals e to the x sine x has horizontal tangents from negative pi to pi. So the word tangent means we're going to take the derivative. So let's start there. Then we'll talk about horizontal and what that means. So first, can you take the derivative? There it is. This is the product rule. The first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. 
horizontal tangent means when the uh, slope of a horizontal line, it's when the derivative is zero. We're going to factor out e to the x. And then this is impossible. So we take the second factor equal to zero. And then we're going to think about our unit circle. So it's from negative pi to positive pi. Which is an awkward interval, but it's fine. So on the unit, let's just think about first of all, where are they equal to each other, but one's positive and one's negative? So that's right here, and that's right here. At this point and at this point, cosine and sine have the same value, but one's negative and one's positive. So between negative pi and positive pi, that is going to be negative pi over 4. And this is going to be positive 3 pi over 4. Number 30. At number 30, this is without using a calculator. Area. And if I had a little graph, maybe it would help me. So y equals 0 and x equals 1. So when I look at it, 2x over x to the fourth plus 1. Uh, when I look at it, I know when you plug in 0, the answer is 0. And when I plug in positive 1, the answer is 2 over 2, which is 1. It's a curve in terms of that. However, it curves is fine. And then it says find the area bounded by that, x equals 1, and y equals 0. It's this area. And if you drew it a bit wrong, you can see top subtract bottom. We're taking the curve, subtract 0, and we're integrating. So we have uh, 2x over x to the fourth plus 1. And it'd be top subtract bottom 0. And the bounds would go 0 to 1. So that's what would find the area under the curve of 2x over x to the fourth plus 1. Uh, what is this in the form of? So there's a few things I look at. Uh, the derivative of this is, does not match the numerator. It is not a logarithm. It could be arctangent, the way it looks. So how I can tell is if u is the square root of x to the fourth, that's x squared, du is 2x dx, and a is the square root of 1, which is 1. When I look at the numerator, I see 2x dx. It matches perfectly. This is definitely arctangent. And so we start with 1 over a, that's 1 over 1, I don't need it, arc tangent, and then it's u over a, which is x squared over 1, or just x squared. And then I'm integrating from 0 to 1. I plug in 1, subtract, plug in 0. At what angle is tangent equal to 1? That's pi over 4. At what angle is tangent equal to 0? That's 0. And so this answer for the area under the curve is pi over 4. Number 31. In number 31, find a general solution to this Diffie cube. So let's see if we can go through the steps to solve this together. And again, whatever you think. So think of the first step. Can you do the first step and kind of go from there? You can get help, and whenever you think you feel better about it, then so be it. At this step, I'm going to multiply by dy by dx just to bring it here with y to make it easier to look at. And then I'm going to separate. I'm going to multiply by dx. And now the variables are separated. So I'm going to integrate. You could have the y in front or behind. It is what it is. This is y squared divided by 2. Um, the hook here is negative, so there's a negative in front. And the rule for cosine is positive sine, but that negative makes it negative sine, plus c. Then I'm going to multiply by 2.
And instead of writing down 2c, I'm going to do a constant substitution right away. And then I'm going to square root. I know the answer could be positive or negative. Negative 2 sine x plus c2. That's the general solution. I'm going to rewrite it because I ran out of space. So let me do it over here. So again, the general solution is plus or minus the square root of negative 2 sine x plus some constant. And then it says find the particular solution through a point, pi over 2 and negative 3. So at pi over 2, negative 3, uh, plug in the y value. In fact, I don't like going from this one. I like going bump it 1 before. So it was y squared equals negative 2 sine x plus the constant. I want to plug in there, and then I'll go back to this. This is easier to work with. So the y value is negative 3. So that makes it 9. At pi over 2, that's at the top of your unit circle, and the y coordinate there is positive 1. And then if I solve it, add 2 to the other side, and you have the constant, which is 11. Am I plugging in negative pi over 2 or positive pi over 2? Maybe I didn't look at it. No, it's positive pi over 2, right? Or is it negative x? Did I make that? Oh, it's negative x. So when I integrate this, this should have been negative x. I'm just going to change it to negative x all the way down. So this should have been negative x. So now when I plug in pi over 2, that's really negative pi over 2. And negative pi over 2 is at the bottom of the circle. So that's really negative 1. So this is really 7. When you add 2 to the... So negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. Subtract 2, that's why it's 7. The y coordinate is negative. So it's negative, the square root of negative 2 sine negative x plus 7. And I have my answer. Thirty-two. We're almost there. Find the slopes of the solution for dy by dx if the slope equation is negative x times y and this connects to a slope field so that 32, 33, and 34 are all connected. So let's just go from there. So at 0, 0, the slope is 0. At 0, 1, the slope is 0. So I'm just plugging into here. At 1, negative 1, just multiply them together, but it's a negative answer. So a negative times a negative would make that positive 1. A 1, 1, uh, negative 1 times 1, a negative 1, negative 2. So that is positive 1 times negative 2, which is negative 2. In 33, it says do a slope field for that. And they said do it 2 by 2. So I'm going to do a slope field. And it's going to go like 2 here, 2 here, and just kind of create these big dots. to the best of my ability. So that's a 2 by 2 there. Then I'm going to do slopes on there. So I already have slopes. I get 0. It's 0. 0 in both directions. So this is all 0 right there. They're all horizontal. At uh, 1, negative 1. So at 1, negative 1, it was 1. At 1, 1, it was negative 1. So there's symmetric there. At negative 1, negative 2, it was negative 2. So I'm going to fill them in. So I just have to multiply and make it negative. So 1 times 2 is 2, but it's a negative 2. 
Uh, 2 times 1 is 2, but it's a negative 2. And this is a negative 4. Here we go. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, but make it negative, so it's positive 2. Uh, 1, 2 times 1, negative 1 is negative 2, but you change the sign. And this is 2 times 2, that's going to be positive 4. On this side, negative 1 and positive 1, we make it positive. A negative 1 and 2, and make it positive. Uh, 2 and 1, make it positive, and make it positive. Here, these are going to be negative slopes. So 1 times 1, that's going to be a negative 1. It's going to be a negative 2. This is going to be a negative 4. And you have your slope field. To draw on it, it says, draw the solution through 0, negative 2. And then see what it does. So I see how it rises, and then it does that. It rises and does that. So it's not undefined, but at that zero slope, it flattens out. and doesn't cross over, because it tells you what direction to go there. And then in the last part, number 34, can you solve that Diffie Q? So to solve this Diffie Q, I'm going to multiply by dx. I'm also going to divide by y. So this is going to be an exponential. I see how that it's a logarithm. But then I'm going to, it's going to be uh, e to the negative x squared over 2 times e to the c plus or minus. and then do a substitution to have an easy constant. And is there a point to plug in? Find the solution through 0, negative 2, what I just did. So C2 is equal to negative 2. So when I plug in 0, it's just e to the 0, which is 1. So it's y equals negative 2 e to the negative x squared over 2, and you have your equation. All right, we did it. So I'm so proud of you for doing your work. Until next time, Mr. G Math, over and out.